Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. It's going to be a warm one here today in mid-October 2023. Um, the flowering period has finished and I thought at least for some of this video I'd show you what it looks like in what's called the nut set period. That's the period after which the flowers have, have died off and you can see, particularly on the lower trees, what that's going to produce in terms of nuts or, or baby nuts they've got to make it a little way to get to fruition but um, we'll talk about that a little bit as well so I uh, brought you back to block one which is a, a mixture of varieties here and I can show you some things you can look at the racemes on the tree here some of them are dead they look like, like little sticks hanging down but some of them have little nuts on them and they're variable there's some racemes there that were like, full of basically hundreds of flowers but they've got in some cases three four nuts maybe one or two um, and it varies sometimes all over the tree and um, and it completely varies between tree to tree particularly where you have some different varieties on the one block so I can just take you down some of the varieties in this block um, I can't tell you what all of them are and I am definitely working on um, a video that hopefully lets you distinguish between varieties here's a 246 for example one of the industry stalwarts it's bearing a crop this tree for the first time this year and it's got some rather large nutlets on it they, they really look quite good actually and that's a, that's a very well performing uh, example of my 246s which were the earliest trees I planted when I got here to Nutkin Farm um, about three years ago I uh, started planting them anyway about three years ago and it you know varies down the road a little bit um, for other ones that I planted there's um, some adult trees there We've got some nuts on this tree, whatever that variety is. All right? And that particular variety seems to only be having like one nut per raceme, although it's, it's not uniform. We've got my 788s, again, flowering for the first time this year. And off those huge racemes that I showed you a couple of videos ago, we've got some, we've got some nuts, really. You know, we've got some, in some cases, one or two advanced racemes with nuts that are way bigger than they have any right to be in October. It kind of reminds me of the days back at school when I was in year 9 and 10 and the teachers were looking at our terrible behaviour and trying to reason it all away on the fact that you boys are all at different stages of development. Well I feel like saying that to the nuts on the trees here. Here's an A4. Racemes absolutely everywhere. Only a few of them have nuts and that's a4 it's a show pony so it does sort of um, bring into issue what you spray uh, to try and protect these nuts because they are vulnerable at this stage those little nutlets that I've shown you have no shell at all they're just a massive pulp inside the nut if I was to squish one and show you um, so they are vulnerable at the moment to two particular pests uh, at least in the northern rivers of New South Wales one of those is a fungus one of them is an insect the fungus pest is husk spot it's a disease that uh, is, a, is obviously fungus on the shell or on the outside of the growing nut which can basically stop its further development causing the nut to fall off well before any time you could harvest it and obviously it, ha well, it happens any time from sort of this baby nut process through to maturity. It doesn't affect the mature nuts so much because they're ready to drop. But at this stage, a nut that is susceptible to husk spot, and most of the older varieties are a bit susceptible, um, needs some protection from that. Uh, the options for protecting from husk spot have changed probably more than any other kind of spray over the years simply because there's so many options you can go from the old 
copper hydroxide sort of sprays which are organically certified and yeah, coat the nuts with a, a coating of this copper hydroxide that helps protect it from fungus also helps to create copper deficiency um, I have been a fan of it I, I don't see anything wrong with that kind of methodology myself uh, there's an old fungicide called spin or spin flow which is quite toxic and not in favor anymore although it does seem to last a long time and it's cheap to buy some farmers rely on that and when you've got nuts at all stages of development but but most of them in this young stage it really is a no-brainer to try and spray for some husk spot remedy while you uh, while they're in that phase particularly if it's a husk spot uh, susceptible variety um, and the prices for these sprays obviously vary a lot as well. It's something where if you're considering it after watching this video, you'd need to ring your agricultural supplier and say, look, what have you got? How much does it cost? And, uh, and then do your budgeting accordingly. For me at Nutkin Farm, I chose um, a product called Symbio, which is just like a product called Cabrio. I think that's the BASF original chemical. Um, they have for fungicides groups, the same way they do for insecticides, group one, group two, whatever else. And the trick with fungicides is you can have more than one spray if you need to, and often people will do it a bit later in the season. But you shouldn't do the same group of spray every time because what happens is some spores of fungus are naturally resistant to what you spray. Just, a, just in terms of natural variation between the actual species of, of husk spots fungus. And if you keep spraying the one product, what you'll be left with after the spray's killed all the other kinds, you'll only be left with the resistant kind, and it just means that that particular fungicide will then become useless if fungus breaks out later in the season or even next season. So you go from a different group so this time i used symbio which i believe is group seven if i need another spray after that i might well use another newer product uh, again from basf called uh, blanty which is group three and you just vary the groups and copper is another group again uh, if you want to use that for one of the sprays so that's how you deal with fungus on baby nuts so that little fellas like this one can get to be big fellas without dropping off from fungus attack. Now down to the insects. In spring, at least in, in the northern rivers in Australia, there are two kinds of insects you watch out for at this time of the year. The first and most dangerous one is macadamia seed weevil and it's a horrible little pest. Um, you know I've always long to find one on my travels may well you know even while making a video for you guys so I could show you what one looks like they're little monsters they really look like little gremlins anyway they prey from nut early nut onwards and basically lay their eggs into the soft nut and their grubs develop inside the nut using it as a home and eating out the nut and of course making it completely useless um, well before harvest time and this macadamia seed weevil has become a more prevalent pest in the northern rivers. There's some parts of Australia where it certainly hasn't crept in yet, but it, you know it's a native pest. It'll get there eventually, I would imagine. Now, the traditional spray for that is a product called Indoxicarb. Indoxicarb is something that many of you will be using in your households without knowing it particularly if you live in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, around about Bondi, Randwick, Queen's Park, those sorts of areas. There are cockroaches everywhere and the cockroach baits that you can get from your supermarket are little plastic containers that inside the middle of them contain, contain indoxicarb, plus some food stuff that attracts the cockroaches to eat it. Um, what that does is, for cockroaches as well as for macadamia seed weevil, is it breaks the breeding cycle. They eat that, they take it back to their nest, that product will stop them from breeding. And in macadamias it's very effective, it can stop it from breeding for about um, 13 weeks. 
and in the average macadamia season so long as you've got a decent spray of endoxycarbon done right you won't get that pest flaring up at all because you'll kill the breeding cycle before it can really get stuck into your nuts and that is when they're sort of mid-sized and they size up and start you know the shell starts hardening in, hardening in December so the idea is spraying in October is the sweet spot because you will stop the breeding cycle and up until the the nut shell hardens the nut will then be protected because these little critters cannot breed there is a new product on the market as of this year or perhaps late last year it's called Vaigo. Uh, people in the apple and almond industries uh, are already aware of that product it's it's not new specifically for macadamias but it's been certified for use on macadamias now it's much more of a classic insecticide it kills macadamia seed weevil in every stage larval stage adult whatever so long as they're not well inside the nut i don't think it's a systemic there's a um, macadamia I think that's one of my 835s it is one of my 835s so it's going to bear me some nuts this year with any luck um so yeah vaigo has been tested it, it works on macadamia seed weevil but you would spray it in a different way because if you've got active weevils foraging and the breeding cycle has sort of got out of control you may want to use something like vaigo to knock down the adults and stop them from causing immediate damage rather than a product that stops them from breeding in the first place now as of 2023 the agronomists are still recommending indoxicarb and i think i see why i think I, I i think i agree with them far better to prevent a pest than to spray one that's already there so you know an adult weevil may not be able to breed but it can certainly burrow into your nuts and cause some damage so there's a uh, there's your sort of trade-off and uh yeah then provided you get through that round of protection in october you basically hope for good weather conditions and a bit of rain and a fair bit of sunshine to size up the nut towards the end of the year and um, get it to a good harvestable size for when they start you know start getting harvestable in March the following year do you need to do more sprays after this well usually because the other pest that can even start around now is called fruit spotting bug and I think it's related to what the Hawaiians call stink bug um, the Americans have such nice literal descriptions for things but it does stink a little bit but it's a it's a pest that basically stings the surface of a nut and causes it to be unviable and um, it can become a very big pest traditionally it's always been one of the very biggest pests of macadamias and there are multiple options for that might talk about that kind of pest control if and when that's needed on Nutkin Farm. But uh, yeah, October starts getting warm in the Northern Rivers and it's not reliable warmth. Um, it can be, you can recede into winter again every so often. Today we've got a high of 29 degrees Celsius, but uh, we're going to get into the 30s tomorrow. And then the day after that, we're going to drop all the way down to 23. Now the cooler days are better for doing work, but uh, those cooler days run out pretty quick. So plenty of sun, which is what the trees need to make the crop. The other thing they need though is rain. And October can be an interesting month because September's the driest month up here. And I've checked the BOM stats for this area and we've had in 2023 just under a thousand millimeters of rain. Um, which is which is actually quite a bit below average. Um, in, in an average year now, we get just under 2,000 millimetres of rain. So we've only got October, November and December to catch up. That's uh, We're not going to get 300 mils a month. There's no way. So it's definitely going to be a drier than normal year. Uh, my neighbour, Peter Fraser, has, gives me the old adage that the best macadamia seasons have a dry September for flowering and a wet October to get the nuts going.
but I don't think we're really going to be seeing that wet October part of the equation. Um, the rainfall, if El Nino happens, can start up again in February, March. That's no good for the nuts because they've reached their maximum size by about Christmas time. But of course, it's always good for powering up the tree for the next season. It allows you to get your fertilizer down so that you can plan a little bit ahead. So otherwise, you can see for yourself, the farm's looking good. I've been getting the mowing done. It's good to get grass under control. If you're a macadamia farmer at this kind time of the year, you know, the hot sun will keep it down. Um, the clippings will turn into nice mulch for you. And um, you, can, you can get on and do other things and put fertilizer down. And you can do that a little bit more accurately when the grass is down, in my opinion. Now I'm gonna finish on stupid my macadamia h2 tree that is really honestly i've got to call it something else look at these nuts literally all through the tree i'd have to say this tree has more crop on it than just about any other tree in my orchard so i don't know guys find me another name for stupid that means stupid but productive and uh the best suggestion i see in the comments below may well be the new name for this particular tree in the meantime i've got some of my more difficult blocks to mow and uh, i'm gonna really be praying for that afternoon sea breeze that tends to hit every orchard in the northern rivers and make life just that bit more tolerable in the afternoons i hope you're having fun doing whatever it is you're doing and i will get back to you again shortly thanks Bye for now.